Um, I'm a little tired today, so I have to apologize to y'all up front. I was up real late last night. Um, Freeway Ricky Ross is coming home on May 4th, and we just got word last night, so I had a little hard time sleeping because he's my boy, and I was real excited about that. So, um, I have to be ready. Right? So, um, I'm a little groggy and a little sluggish today, so I apologize in advance. Um, I'm going to ask the panelists to all introduce themselves and talk a little bit about how they got started um, in the industry, because I know a lot of people out there want to eventually be doing what we're doing at some point. Um, so when you introduce yourselves, and you would just mention a little bit about how you got started in the music industry, that would be awesome. Um, can I start with you, Okay. Okay. Testing. Okay, I'm Bo Lagan Lou from uh, the group Full Force. Out the way. Also from the movie's house party. Yeah. I'm kick your fucking ass. I smell. All the spine over here. I smell. I smell. Ah! Nah. Let that shit run. Let that shit run. Nah, nah. But um, also, I, I can't go on saying what uh, me and my brother we do without also recognizing somebody in the house that actually part of history with us because we started in the industry as our producers before we were like full force the group and the first group we ever got together was uh, UTFO, Kango Kid, Dr. Ice, the educator rapper, and the legendary DJ himself, and can you please stand up, Mix Master Ice! The okay, he paid me to say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, we, we started a business uh, producing uh, from UTFO, then we did um, Lisa Lisa and Co Jam, where we wrote um, and produced everything she did from I Wonder If I Take You Home, Can You Feel the Beat, All Cried Out. Uh, James Brown, Full Force was the last week. James Brown's last top five record, top five hit records was I'm Real and Static. And we wrote and produced both of those joints for Mr. James Brown. And we produced a lot of people from Selena. And um, then, then all of a sudden, when the industry was getting a little dry and we couldn't get meetings with the black execs, we started venturing over to the white people. And we produced Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake. Um, and the NSYNC, and um, we've just been versatile ever since, and we've done stuff with producer Rihanna and Little Kim, and we've just been doing our thing. Some of my brother Paul and Anthony take That pretty much says it all, but um, we knew from the very beginning, from being one of the first to merge uh, hip-hop and R&B and then the pop with the Latin, and then with the house with Samantha Fox, we always connected with the DJs, because it always started there for us from the very beginning. So even now, you know, we get some Rihanna stuff, but we always keep our foothold on That's the core. People we'll seem to forget that. So we're going to bring that back to comments. Good morning, everybody, man. Y'all up early, man. Y'all mean business. Y'all look hungry. At 11 o'clock in the morning, me, I was talking to Wendy. I didn't think this many people would be up at 11 o'clock in the morning, man. So give y'all a round. Give us a round. Man, um, <laughs> I, I came to the United States, I, I lived in Chicago, and uh, while I was going to high school, and uh, a friend of mine, Tony Palmer, started to look, I used to rap that regular shit, you know, do my little thing. You know, we used to have a three-piece band, so he used to sing, then I used to rap, so every time the band would break, then I, I would play music at this club called Cool Run that this guy had. And I wasn't a good DJ, but I was a good mic. I would just play all the hits. I never, you know what I'm saying, try to mix or nothing. I just play the hits or whatever. So it just got to the point where we started doing basement parties and stuff. And, you know, it got good. It's about $2 to get in and all that stuff. And then I moved to Florida. And when I moved to Florida, I kind of got deep into the hip hop scene. And people like TJ and Derek Washington, you know, they were servicing records. And being in Jamaica playing reggae 
we didn't have too much access, you know, to the hip hop things for free until TJ and Derek started giving it out, and I really got into it. And I, I got a, <laughs> this is his part, yeah. I got a passion for independent artists because, you know, just being around and see how they go to the studio and spend their last dollar and, you know, be dead broke after that and just be so excited about their music. And nobody really gave them a chance unless they had money. So I started this movement. And I, I mean, just breaking independent artists. That was my thing for years. And really, and truly, to be honest with you, when I met people like T.I. and, and A. Ball and J.G. and those guys, I was just doing it because it was an ego thing, right? It was my ego to break the record. And all of a sudden, it just became a successful business. And if, if, if you should watch my track record, like she, you know, Wendy and T.J. can tell you, I do a, a ghetto Grammy every year. And what my ghetto Grammy is about is giving people like behind the scenes that nobody know about. Like the guy who worked for TJ in the office and the, the girl who worked for Wendy Day in the office and all the rappers that spent all their little money to make the album and nobody bought them and nobody listened to them. I kind of give them a little something to let them know like, that that you tried. And somebody out here recognize your hard work. So I'm really deep into the independent movement. I got a real passion for um, when Jesus first came out, I was on it harder when he became a star, and I eased off and go to somebody that's coming up. I'm always into the independent movement. When they can tell you, I give up doing the CD for Ross, just to do it for somebody who's just getting started. Especially, I can listen to music and, and hear the passion in their voice. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of these guys are giving the music and it's not ready. You know? A lot of these guys cannot take constructive criticism. Like, <laughs> you know, you might have a cheat. But doing this for 18, 19 years, I swear to God, I can tell. 90% of the time, I can tell if this is going to be a hit, or it's just going to be a song you want to play. And everybody forgot about it after you play. You know, I, 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 that, that, that's, our, that's my greatest thing, is trying to deal with people who come to me with a record. And then I see the passion in their eyes, and it, it's real hard for you to tell them, like, dog, you, you, you got to put it back in the oven, man. It ain't ready. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, that's the only thing that's really hurt me in this business. So, really, true. That's, how, that's, that's how I got started, you know, doing the independent thing. And um, now I'm doing pretty good, making a good living out of it. I, I, got, I got to say, I'm happy. I know people digging graves in Colorado in the wintertime. Shit, that can't be a good job. I'm playing music, I'm dancing, and I'm enjoying it, and loving it, and getting paid for it. Or oh, I'm a hot motherfucker. <laughs> Hey, good morning, y'all. Uh, my name is TJ Chapman, uh, TJ's DJs. Glad to be here. I didn't know I was going to make it this morning. You know, it was a party too far last night. But uh, no, I just want to, you know, I, I got started uh, DJing in 1984. Um, man, I used to scratch every dudes like you. I met Cut Creator the other day. Used to try to emulate his scratches back in the day. Um, but yeah, man, I, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Yeah! <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All right. And my pants stood up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I started, I, I, I was watching Beat Street breaking, you know, and just seeing the DJs, how they would rock the parties, and how they were just so cool. Shit, I wanted a DJ. You know what I'm saying? So I started DJing, uh, DJing in junior high, DJing in high school, and then I and got a scholarship to go to school down in Florida and in Florida. So then I moved down there and uh, started DJing down there just to, you know, help pay my way through school. Um, <clears throat> then after a while, I started DJing the clubs. Started DJing on the road for a dude called Beatmaster Clay V. The next thing I know, it just was a matter of uh, uh, transition, you know, and feeling like I was doing everything I could do as a DJ. And I just started getting into management. Um, started being his road manager, then started being his, his actual personal manager. Uh, then renegotiated his deal. The next thing I know, 93, I did my first major deal with a dude named Prince Raheem. But all this to say, you know, I started out as a DJ. The DJ is my foundation. The love for music is my foundation. 